at Zheng Fan's residence in a Moan comic studio. Inside, there are many of his artworks. Some other people are looking at all of his works. Zheng Fan, sitting in a chair holding his drawing with a weak face, coughing, examining his drawings. He then expresses his happiness and welcomes everyone. However, he apologizes for not contacting them all this time. They are all here now. Today, he also apologizes for not listening to them from the beginning. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. However, their studio will still be there. But now they just need to say goodbye to the readers. He is very happy to do so and able to create so many stories and characters with all of them. He wishes them success in everything, both health and others. Later on, Zhang Fan, very ill, says something, that he will miss his readers like before. Then, on the other side, Zheng Fan, who was previously dead, suddenly finds himself in a bed with closed eyes. He lies on the bed, while a servant wipes his head with a towel. After that, he opens his eyes and asks where he is now and why he is here. She released her hand from her face and dripped the bowl of water. The girl fell to the floor while Zheng Fan rose from the bed and asked her who she was and why she was here. However, due to Zheng Fan's shock, he accidentally pushed his servant, causing him to fall in surprise. The servant then ran out of the room, screaming. He shouted that Zheng Fan had woken up and repeated the word several times. However, when he disappeared, she slowly lowered her feet from the bed. Zheng Fan sat up and stretched his shoulders. Zheng Fan talked about whether he was not dead. If he was dead, was he reborn? Then he saw the clothes hanging nearby. After that, he immediately took them and put them on while thinking that this body was very weak, so he could hardly take these clothes for himself. And it was not like his sick body in the past. However, suddenly a girl entered the room saying, Master. He stared at the girl in shock, thinking how it could be that Feng Xinyang was in front of him. He rushed towards her and hugged her very tightly, shouting that she had finally woken up. But as his obedient servant, she waited for them for half a year. However, after that, Zheng Fan became very confused because in front of him was the heroine of his work. Then suddenly, with surprise, Feng Xinyang moved away from Zheng Fan. She was shocked and asked for forgiveness, saying that she had violated etiquette. She knelt before him and placed her hand on her heart, apologizing to her master and continuing to say it immediately. However, after the servant informed him that he had woken up, the slave could not believe his ears. Zhang Fan felt embarrassed thinking about this. Feng Xinyang called him Master. She approached him and grabbed his arm while telling him that his master would follow him. Everyone else would too, so be happy when they find out about it. Then, after that, Feng Xinyang escorted him to the building nearby. And she informed his master that this was the mansion courtyard. They were all here, in the room where they were, as someone poured red liquid into a glass. Feng Xinyang spoke to a man named Ah Ming and said that Zheng Fan had regained consciousness. However, after that, Zheng Fan stared in shock at the man in front of him. He thought that the man in front of him was a vampire named Ah Ming. Feng Xinyang saw Ah Ming's silent reaction. She said it was really rude. How dare he show disrespect to the master? Ah Ming approached them and placed his hand on his heart. Then after that, he said, Greetings, my lord. Later on, Feng Xinyang took Zheng Fan away from Ah Ming and told the man not to bother paying attention to him. He is foolish and has a bad temper. Then they had to go to another place. Zheng Fan left and thanked Feng Xinyang and Ah Ming. All of this is his heroic work. He came and was surprised. That is indeed the case. It turns out he was not involved in this matter. However, after that, he was greeted by dwarf Shui San the dwarf who was sitting on the shoulder of a big man named Woodcutter Fan Li. After that, he said, The master finally woke up. Long live the master. Then they approached them from behind and said how splendid his appearance was, and like lunch would be served earlier. Zhang Fan turned around and saw blind Bei and zombie Liang Cheng. Zhang Fan understood that in the end he was indeed accompanied by these heroic figures. It was the day of the demon king. Then the sun illuminated the house. Inside, there were Zheng Fan and his fans who believed that he was the author. A horror man he had become until now, and who would have thought it happened after the death of an incurable disease. He would do anything to keep living, 
and at the same time live in a world where he obtained it. The hero of his work is Zhang Fan. He sat at the head of the table where Feng Xinyang, A Ming, Dwarf Shui San, and Blind Bei and Liang Chang were also sitting and eating. Feng Xinyang raised her glass and congratulated the man on his return, and from now on they all had someone to follow. Other people felt happy and raised their glasses, smiling at Zheng Fan. However, he thought about being called Master again, but he ordered them to follow him again. But if his entourage acted out of character, they or something with a loud voice, Zheng Fan asked everyone if they went down to the world. Half a year ago, and during this time they only earned money to make a living here. His entourage froze in shock upon hearing this question. Blind Bay interrupted the silence and said that since the day they entered this world, it was not only Zhang Fan who was forgotten, but everyone became like that too. Then, after that, the ordinary people were surprised to think so. Who would have thought that the demon king from the bottom of the pit could create bloody chaos in a minute? Suddenly becoming ordinary, it was not surprising if they spent so much time in this guest house. Only then did Zhang Fan think that even though everyone around him called him master. However, the reality is indeed so. Completely unprepared to lead the demon king with all his grandeur. He spoke loudly asking Feng Xinyang about where the devil's pill was. It was when he turned away from her and told the man to wait a moment. But after that, Zhang Fan thought that Feng Xinyang and the blind man were from the questioners who helped me with them. Only the devil's pill from the beginning to the end was a character entirely created by him. If she were here too, she would be very happy. Feng Xinyang handed Zheng Fan a box and said that the devil's pill was here. He asked in surprise what Feng Xinyang meant. She opened the box and said that since she did not have a physical shell, she did not need to eat or drink, so she sealed it. Then after that, there was a blue stone in the box. After a while, Zhang Fan lay on the bed and stared at the stone where the devil's pill was sealed. Zhang Fan said that previously he was fine, but now he was awake. Why was he still sleeping? He asked if he was embarrassed, said Zhang Fan. However, it was not surprising for him to crawl at the feet of an ordinary person. It was enough for Feng Xinyang to pretend to be his. The servant then heard a sound and someone shouted that it was better to let Feng Xinyang wrap her broken hand. There were shards and blood on the floor. Ah Ming held the bloody palm in front of him and said that it was not right to wrap his hand. He is a vampire. He replied that they didn't have their powers, so he thought it would be better if Ah Ming wrapped his arm. Ah Ming sat in front of the blood fragments and said that he didn't care. He would regain his strength faster than them. It wouldn't take more than three days. Feng Xinyang said with a smile that she would bring the wine to the living room first. Zhang Fan asked Salmon if he was disturbed in the last round, turning his head towards him and said Mr. Zhang Fan suggested that they talk, they went out, and Zhang Fan sat on the chair and asked Ah Ming if he wanted to sit. Ah Ming replied that his chair was dirty. Zhang Fan said if he knew what place this was. Ah Ming answered that he didn't know Zhang Fan said that he had been here for half a year. However, he never found Ah Ming answered that he was only interested in the winemaker Zhang Fan asked about it. Who could know, Ah Ming answered that he could be blind. He sat at the gate all day and said that something was wrong. They entered another world and don't try to gather information about it. All players know that the most important thing to do is to spy, especially in terms of rebirth, isn't Ah Ming necessarily. However, he answered that he did not lose consciousness either. Zhang Fan was surprised to think about the kind of logic that Ah Ming wanted to blame everything on him. Ah Ming told the master that he didn't need to be afraid of them. He asked him about it again, still hungry, and said that they really hated him but didn't want to leave. They didn't leave him when he was in oblivion, and now he had woken up. They wouldn't leave him again. Zheng Fan asked him about it again, thinking about it to himself. Then, after that, Ah Ming decided to break through his feelings that would be fine if Feng Xinyang and Susan gave this. But to hear this from the vampire ancestors, maybe they mixed up the words Ah Ming said. They left them. But he not only didn't leave them, but also continued their story because they didn't do it. Leave him hungry. Turn around and say that when his master was in oblivion, they just needed to wait until today. However, after that, 
Blind Bi Yi knew more about this world, they still had to ask him. Ah Ming left Zheng Fan to sit alone, saying loudly that you hate something, but they still didn't leave. He thought that it seemed like they all knew that they were heroes of his work, so they recognized him as Zheng Fan. They looked up at the sky and said thank you. Here, Ah Ming, who had stepped aside, was surprised by something he saw, shocked and healed in an instant, with no more scratches on his arm. Dwarf Shuasan sat on a mat in front of the people at their table and told them it was the last time he stopped. About how his brother Ho became the strongest warrior by throwing himself onto his donkey's saddle. He immediately clashed with the enemy's 3,000 punches, and the battlefield spread hundreds of lies that he didn't have time to finish. When one of the people listening laughed and said the strongest warrior, and his donkey is fast. Zhang Fan sat behind the table and also saw Dwarf Shue San sitting with his head resting on his hand and thinking that Dwarf Shue San, who likes to cut people piece by piece, has become a simple storyteller. If the reader knows about it, it is scary to imagine what will become of him. Then he turned his belongings to the side while thinking, and yes, he saw a beautiful girl and a fat man hugging him. Zheng Fan thought like this in himself, working in all times in all cities and all over the world. Feng Xinyang opened a brothel, but she was afraid that this one was the most neglected of all. Zheng Fan said, this world is truly ordinary blind people. However, after that, Blind Bi told him that in this world only the power of the local government is weak, and it seems quite ordinary world. He said that everyone he met for six months. These are ordinary people here. A man walks down the street on a horse with a strange green color, and his horse itself is green. Zheng Fan pointed forward with his finger and said that look at that horse over there, they who are blind in the ordinary world. Blind Bei said that he was blind when night arrived at their home. Feng Xinyang told the gentleman that everyone gathered Zhang Fan was holding a crystal in which a demon pill had sealed himself. However, he said that the others he already had learned the opinion of the blind man about this world, what they all think about him. Feng Xinyang replied by greeting him as a true man, but it doesn't matter what they think about their world, they just want to know what the next step will be. Then after that, Feng Xinyang, who sang while pointing to the door behind her with her finger, and said that when they opened this hymn, they agreed. That when the man wakes up, he will personally choose the name they have chosen for good, or the dragon gate in Feng Xinyang asked what belongs to him. His majesty thought of Zhang's fan name said to sit and wait for death or take fate into your own hands, all have gone through death here is there. But another thing to consider the second one would be better. Feng Xinyang asked the Lord to think again. He answered not worthy he remembered his past life. He thought that, in the past, he praised everything terrifying because it inspired him. Unfortunately, it was only through drawing that he managed to feel this atmosphere for himself. He saw it. The group thought that in this world he had nothing else except for me to live in this world. Every day is so great, therefore the acquisition itself chooses a calm and measured life better. He hurried towards the adventure Zheng Fan put the crystal back into the box and set it. Although he lost the game, it would end. But once he decided his future fate, he would choose something that he would not regret in it, a blind person. The future blind B.I. answered that he understood. Dwarf Zhui San was told to go to the council district as soon as possible. He promptly jumped off Fan Li's shoulder and replied that Fan Li was told to look for the caravan and infiltrate there to find out if there was a suitable place for them. He answered with a smile. Understanding Blind B said that the daughter of the city's chief guard suffered from infertility. When she was here, she saw her fate at night. She sent her some water, and there was an inn. And Feng Xi Niang will meet the blind guest. Blind Bei told Liang Chen to help synonymize with Ah Ming to ensure that everything goes smoothly. And finally, he got a juicy piece of meat. But he had to remember that the first bite had to go to Master Feng Xin Yang said, Okay, she would personally receive guests today. Whoever paid the most would get it. Zheng Fan thought so. Although it may seem true that over the past six months the men have become more obedient, it is not their true character. They are just waiting, waiting for her to wake up waiting for her order. And finally, before she wakes up, all they do is sing a fake fang song passing by Ah Ming and saying that she won't have dinner tonight. She asks him that the blood is not good enough. Ah Ming answers yes. 
just disgusting. He clenches his fists. Feng Xinyang says that Fan Lai went to the desert with the caravan. Dwarf Suisan handed over the material to the district council. The blind man went to the head of the city guard but has not returned. Ah Ming's response understands Zheng Fan. He sits at the table and asks the salmon, can he help her with something? Ah Ming tells her that actually God has already helped them a lot. Zheng Fan thinks that in other words, he only helps by not interfering. Ah Ming's words offer has ended, but there is a small problem. They paid too high a price on the road. There are two men talking, one of them fanning himself. A fan says, who are these people from the inn, each decorated like a demon? The other man replies to the young man that this is their peculiarity. Surely their guest is the son of the head of some influential clan. He will be accompanied by him. However, even though he will say that he looks more like a guard, as they say. In the last few days, he has been making a lot of noise in the city. However, no one dared to rule over him and Zhang Fan said that if there was no need to worry, he would place the highest bid. The more money and the higher his status in society, the greater the real influence he should have. He did not miss such a big fish. Aming replied that the stronger the guard, the more valuable the loot owned. Simeon had already received the money. He did not need to sleep with him due to real hunger, continuing by telling Zhang Fan that if he really wanted to help Liang Chang stand on the wall with him, arms crossed in front of his chest, Xiang Fan walked towards him in the corridor. Liang Chang asked Zheng Fan who made him come here. Aming's reply was that it was his desire. He brought his pot. Zheng Fan took the pot and said that he broke it. However, he did not bring up any problems that Zhang Fan himself thought about. That not only Aming, but also Liang Chang considered him a burden. Liang Cheng ordered him to do what he deemed necessary, but not to overdo it. Liang Cheng climbed the stairs and said in the end he could not sacrifice his safety. Mr. Zheng Fan was surprised when he thought that Liang Chun cared about him, standing under the window from where the words, beautiful. Here comes someone burning with impatience, and he has done something for his hunger, holding a knife in his hand. And looking at his hand, he forcibly stabbed the knife into his hand. He pulled out the knife and blood spurted from his hand. He moved his tongue over his wound and smiled his eyes burning with blue fire. Later on, Feng Xinyang asked if the man liked her. The man stared at her in surprise, opening his eyes as he sat on the bed in black clothing. The man in men's underwear answered that he really liked her. He had never seen anyone more beautiful, Feng Xinyang said with a big smile. He had a handkerchief. The man opened his mouth with saliva dripping from it. Feng Xinyang leaned back on the bed saying that if the man liked her, he would get up from the bed. The man hugged her shoulders and said, the white mist slave spun around them. Feng Xinyang sang, putting the man on the bed, saying that her slave could measure everything for her. She began to take off the stockings in front of the man who responded to each pair with embarrassment, opening his reddened eyes. However, there was a male security guard standing at the door in the corridor, firmly crossing his arms at the door and asking, what are they doing here? Liang Chang and Zheng Fan walked down the corridor. Liang Chang said it was the owner's command that they brought the best wine, the man replied, that he doesn't drink. Liang Chang informed the guests that he misunderstood them bringing wine at the host's request. Then the man turned and stared at Zheng Fan, instructing them to pass through Zheng Fan, who walked past a man carrying a barrel with sweat dripping down his face. Feng Xinyang was lying with stockings on the bed, and the man shouted at her to release him asking her where to go. And in that way, he quickly ran, perhaps sneaking up on a man's neck and saying that he was here. Zhang Fan rushed towards the guard, carrying a rod to attack. He smashed it on the man's head, and Feng Xinyang forcibly squeezed the stocking on the man's neck and began to strangle him. Here, with the help of magic, Ah Ming flew into the room through the window. He grabbed a sharp and strong object and stabbed it into the man's neck. He fell to the floor powerless, and Ah Ming stood beside him. Feng Xinyang was sitting on the bed, and a bloodied man lay on the floor in front of her, hunger standing behind her. Feng Xinyang asked if he was not dead yet. Ah Ming replied that he was not a fan. Zhang, who was arguing a lot with the male guard currently, the man drew his sword and rushed to attack him, and he stared at him in shock. 
Liang Cheng drew his sword and rushed, after the man who had rushed there. Zheng Fan's attack appeared behind the man's back. He placed the weapon in front of him where the blue energy was spinning. Zheng Fan opened his mouth in surprise as the sword was aimed directly at Liang Chen's chest. The same dive turning the sword to the man's shoulder with force. He forcibly stabbed the sword into the man's shoulder, and yellow lightning began to gleam from his hand. Liang Chang stood, stabbing his sword into the man's back, and he pierced it through the man's abdomen. The man then asked Liang Cheng that he was a brave man here. He pushed Liang Chen away from him with the help of blue energy, thinking Zheng Fan that there was blue light in front of him. For them, this was internal energy or combat energy. He thought that this time he really succeeded, a big fish, but this fish really didn't want to be eaten here, looking into the room where his master was. However, after that, he opened the door while shouting, Master, are you okay? Tears flowed from his eyes. A magical flash appeared in this room. It was Ah Ming in the stormy wind. Black magic rushed towards him with a smile to attack the man, drawing his sword. Zheng Fan shouted to Ah Ming to watch out for a man using blue magic attack with a sword. Ah Ming was forcibly thrown into the wall because of the blow ordered by the man to tell who sent them. He stood holding the sword he used to stab Ah Ming and shouted at him about who they were. Ah Ming laughed, burning with magical fire. Zhang Fan saw them shocked. His eyes widened. Ah Ming's surprise opened his mouth, gathering energy around him, his fangs elongated like a vampire. He forcefully plunged into the man's neck, screaming in pain, and Ah Ming drove his fangs deeper into the man's neck. The man lost consciousness and became limp. Ah Ming extended his fangs and threw the man's body aside. The man's body fell to the floor. Then, after that, Ah Ming wiped his mouth with his hand and spoke with a smile about how familiar his feelings were. However, his eyes burned with a magical blue fire. Ah Ming spread his wings to the side, the shimmering magic surrounding him. Ah Ming spread his vampire wings to the side, the shimmering magic surrounding him. Feng's singing appearance surprised Ah Ming, as well as Liang Chang. Later on, Ah Ming regained his strength, but they pondered on what they could do. Feng Xinyang walked down the corridor, clicking her heels and saying it was comfortable for them vampires. She bit and restored her strength, satisfying her thirst. Feng Xinyang stopped crossing her arms, chest, and asked Ah Ming when he regained this ability. Ah Ming replied yesterday. Feng Xinyang inquired about his well-being. Ah Ming answered it was due to the master's awakening that Feng Xinyang's eyes lit up. After these words, she thought about the fact that Ah Ming had regained his strength due to the master's awakening. She thought so. Then Zheng Fan also stared at her and shouted what happened to his fangs, telling her with a smile that the fish had been caught. So, he offered to accompany her to the bedroom, and the rest had to be handed over to him later. Liang Chang stood near the coffin where Ah Ming lay. He asked him about the fact that he might sleep in a secret coffin. His recovery was in him. Ah Ming replied that tradition must be respected. Unless he liked zombies not understanding this, Liang Chang said no. He preferred the bed of hunger located in his closing eyes and set it before he did it. Not much sleep in the coffin and... After entering this world, he spent a lot of money ordering them. He was afraid that humans only realized their death. When they grew old, Liang Chang retorted to Ah Ming that he himself is now eternal here some say it means an accident almost happened. Blind Bai peeled fruit while saying that it was his fault. Ah Ming replied that it was his fault, but nevertheless, hunger continues to occur that for some reason, it seems that only a world like that can inspire them. Blind people, blind bee, answered after that. Today's success this world has opened up a little to them. He told them to do it, while he went back to interrogate their hungry guests saying that let the man personally interrogate him. This surprised his interlocutor. Blind B.I. said that he was afraid that his master would not be able to handle this, but let him take care of it for a while. Hunger said that it would be better to speed up the process a little. Blind B.I. asked Ah Ming what the reason for his recovery was. He left while saying that they agreed to stay apart. Except Ahman started acting arbitrarily when the blind man left. Lang Chang asked Ah Ming what they were doing with the man alone. Hunger answered. That sounds strange, 
Liang Cheng asked about what they were doing something strange. Then after that, Ah Ming answered him speaking. Liang Cheng said everything communicated. Ah Ming answered that the honorable man was not important. Liang Chen is right. Ah Ming crossed his arms over his chest and said that they would not leave him. Liang Chang also spoke correctly. Ah Ming said that maybe the only difference between them and him is that he told them that they might not leave him. Their recovery is related to their trust in them. However, the demon knew that they were hungry and continued their reasonable words that since they came to this world, they had recognized it as the master of their hearts. But since the moment he woke up, it seemed like some kind of contract within himself. They had gained power, and everything they needed now was to get their acknowledgement. After that, Liang Chang said he would go to the master. Ah Ming replied that the master was currently taking a bath. Liang Chang wanted to scrub his back, to which he replied that he would wait until the man was finished. Ah Ming asked why he was so impatient, and Liang Cheng said it was easy for Ah Ming to speak since he had recovered. He then asked him to help close the coffin first. Liang Chang, who was asleep, shouted in response to the denial. Zheng Fan bathed and thought, who would have thought they would kill someone for the first time? And he would see something like this for the first time. And he had not a drop of guilt in his soul. Then someone told him that his master needed him personally to interrogate the prisoner. Zhang Fan replied that they had to step up, and then reported to him about the results. Blind B.I. stood behind the screen and immediately said it. When they received any information, they would inform you immediately. Susan stood next to Blind B.I. and asked the master not to worry. This person does not seem like a difficult one to penetrate. If that's the case, it would be foolish of him. Then he conducted an interrogation method that fascinated the world, no longer caring whether someone was moral or right or wrong. But he believed that the most important thing was that they should serve him. All their aspirations, all their awakenings, and all their actions. Zheng Fan covered his eyes with a towel and thought that maybe he had only slept for a few hours. Then Zhang Fan stood near the bathrobe, straightening his sleeves and saying that he didn't notice how he fell asleep, the most obvious change since he arrived in this world. And this is it. He slept more soundly when Liang Chang whispered in his ear. Mr. Zhang opened his eyes in surprise and jumped to the side and shouted at your mother. He shouted as Liang Chen saw the zombie standing next to him. He asked if the interrogation was over. Zhang Fan thought to himself that he almost had a stroke. Besides, he was a real zombie. Liang Cheng said yes. Zhang Fan asked him how his wound was. Liang Chen answered that it was just the beginning. Mr. Zhang Fan asked him if he wanted to wash up. Liang Chang needed a bathroom. Zhang Fan answered no. Mr. Zhang Fan asked what he needed. Then Liang Chang stood silently. Zhang Fan sighed. He put his hand on Liang Chen's shoulder and said, however, that if there was something, he could safely tell him, even though he knew himself, that he couldn't do anything. Zheng Fan kept saying that he could still listen. Liang Chang reached out and put it on Zheng Fan's shoulder. However, he told the gentleman not to go with them next time. Zheng Fan thought to himself about what surprised Liang Chang. However, on that sincere night, he loudly said that he knew he trusted them. Zhang Fan told Liang Chun with a smile that he might leave and find out the results of the interrogation. Liang Chun had to take care of himself. Zhang Fan left Liang Chun alone in the room. He stood there with his hands outstretched. Then his legs gave way and Liang Chang fell to the floor, pressing his hands to his head and talking about how embarrassed he was. Then his eyes shone with magic. A magical fire began to spin around him and it healed his wounds. After that, Zhang Fan was sitting outside having lunch with Blind B.I. He told him that this world is different from their world. It is a much more interesting world. Zhang's fan took the food and talked more to the blind point. Blind B told the man not to pay attention to his ramblings. He would speak slowly from point to point. However, at one point, he drew hieroglyphs on the blind man's table and said that the place they were in now is called Hutchwell City, and this large area of the city belongs to the Beifeng region in the respected Yan Kingdom, other than the county. And there are six other counties in the Yan Kingdom, and its capital is located in Tancheng County. Beifeng County is the northern border of the Yan Kingdom, 
where the kingdom's warriors fought against the robbers a hundred years ago. For the past hundred years, there has been no war between the two sides involving more than 10,000 people. On one hand, this is because the robbers are divided and cannot unite, and on the other hand, because Blind B.E. kept saying so. In addition, the three kingdoms, Chi Chaik and Gin, grinned like tigers looking for their prey, and finally succeeded in diverting their attention to the central plain, with the exception of the small vassal state. In this world, currently under the control of Yan Jin Chu, Zheng Fan asked about the fact that there are only four kingdoms here, to which Blind B.I. said that there is something else interesting. He continued by saying that there are magical monks and martial artists in this world, and they're all evaluated on a nine-point scale, where nine is the lowest indicator and one is the highest, and the male guard who was killed yesterday is not even included in this scale. Zhang Fan thinks that although such things do happen frequently, they are rarely written about. However, after his personal experience, he is still shocked and now feels very excited. Blind B.I., the blind man, now faces the task of finding his way back. Zhang Fan answers that it can be thrown back for now. Zhang Fan asks Blind Bei to tell him in more detail what he plans to do, with a smile on his face. Blind Bei dips his spoon into the food first. He plans to build their city, Huchuo, as the core of their strength. And then he lays out his plan for him. Blind B.I. concludes his speech by saying that this is his plan and asks the man to improve it if there is anything wrong. Zheng Fan replies that he has nothing to add, as Blind Bei has done a very good planning job. Blind Bei says that God is there and Zheng Fan is very wise to think that Blind Bei is praising him too much. Zheng Fan coughs and tells him to say it. If he can help in any way, then let him know about it properly. Although he said to Lion Blind B.I. that a subordinate only needs the trust of the master, Zhang Fan doesn't know what to answer at first. After a few seconds, he informed Blind B.I. that he believed in him. Blind B.I. responded that this was not the case. Zhang Fan was very trusting. Isn't that so? Blind B.I. said. Zhang Fan replied that Blind B.I. was clever, so he believed in him, despite what Zhang Fan said. Zheng Fan claimed that he was lying. He was actually trusted, they said. Not now, Zheng Fan said. He really trusts me, Blind Bei said. His subordinates heard a leaf fall on the plate, jumping with the help of magic from one to another. Blind Bi caught the chopsticks and ate while thanking the man for his trust. Zheng Fan and the surprise said everything, and he thought to himself whether he should keep his distance from Blind Bei, who was sitting surrounded by magic and wiping his hands while smiling, and thinking that this is where they should finish their lunch. Zheng Fan took a walk that he heard strange sounds from the house. He entered there, Zil San was sitting there, hitting the hammer to arrange the layout of the area. Zheng Fan asked him if this was the topographic map. Sion turned to him, saying, Sir, with a sharp smile from the blind man, blind B.I., instructing him to do it now, he was sketching for the next important stage for them to firmly establish themselves in the city of Hudu and build a strategic topographic map for convenience. Zhang Fan took the hammer and handed it to Dwarf Shue San. After that, a hammer was taken and the cards were tapped in the same way Zhang Fan had done with his hand on the shoulder. Dwarf Shue San told him to keep working while he went to check elsewhere. When he left, Zio started coughing and immediately dropped the hammer on the floor, but managed to extinguish it. He happily held his finger. Dwarf Shue San smiled, showing his sharp teeth. Zheng Fan thought so since yesterday Sinyan Lang Chang and the blind man had been behaving strangely. But Dwarf Shue San remained the same as usual. However, his feelings remained the same so that he could get along with them. Xiang Fan approached the door when laughter was heard behind him. Zhang Fan turned his body and wondered if this belonged to Dwarf Shosan's laughter. Then Zheng Fan fell into the room and was enveloped in white mist. Feng Xinyang asked the man if he was right. Zheng Fan inquired of Feng Xinyang what she was doing here. She replied with a smile that she was bringing her clothes. She mentioned that her experiences over the past six months had shown her some sets of clothing. Feng Xinyang tried on the new clothes Zheng Fang said that she had not fully recovered yet. However, they still fit her very well. Zhang Fan replied that he grew up without parents, 
so no one had sewn new clothes for him for a long time. It was time for Zhang Fan to hold Feng Xinyang's hand. He said with a smile that if it was her master's will, then he could play the role of her mother. Zheng Fan said with a smile, Fang Xinyang said that whatever her master desired, she would be ready to cooperate. She was experienced in role-playing. Zheng Fan thought that there was no doubt compared to this devil. She was too pure here. Blind Bei entered the room with a sign saying Master Fang Singin threw a teapot towards him and shouted at Blind Bei that he was a scoundrel and he was not taught to knock Feng Xinyang thought that they had a good atmosphere and he destroyed everything. The blind man was shocked and said that something happened at the entrance of the inn above the throne sat a man who said that soon their forces would be at war. Therefore, the emperor ordered to hire workers who could transport supplies for the army of a thousand. After that, from now on, they are the family of Zhang Fan, Genli Zhang, Chen, and Zhen Ming. They will all go there as men in iron armor with swords, saying that they must hurry until he will not accept any excuses. They should not even think of delaying it. The soldiers' affairs must know that the sword takes many lives. Feng Xinyang stood in front of them, with Zhang Fan and Liang Chang standing behind her. She said that the zoo officer, Ali fled with the merchants, and Ah Ming also fled. What if he infects everyone in the barracks? With TBC, his eyes burned with purple fire. The man thought about his words that the man ordered him to forget. The rest were hired for this job. He left while saying that by tomorrow afternoon they should have arrived at the barracks outside the city. That was their order. They had heard it before. Feng Xinyang told them, Of course, sir. I hope you have a pleasant journey. Zheng Fan thought that this time they really did it. A big problem. Blind Bei entered the room saying that now they have two options. The first is to pack your things and leave the hut today, said Zheng Fan. Then everyone looked at him. Zhang Fan told them that they had dealt with the end and their personalities. Currently, for almost the whole year, besides this, Kudo City is the first point of their plan. It would be bad if they gave up so easily. Besides, it is very unrealistic to rebel against a blind and foolish person. Blind B.I. told the man that he was indeed nearsighted. Then they asked San Zhu to go with them so he could help them. He answered yes with a smile. Feng Xinyang asked why he didn't go as he could serve them. Blind B.I. asked her if she would play the role of a military prostitute, angering Feng Xinyang. Blind B.I. said that it was the duty of a subordinate to remove obstacles in his way. Dwarf Shua San told the man to leave him alone. Zheng Fan sat on the chair and thought about it based on the character of the emperor. He didn't think they wanted to consider him as Liu Chang. He stood in front of them, respecting him in every way. The next day at Zhang Pan's military camp, he entered the tent followed by Liang Changjiang. He said that this time the army's orders were very bad. According to him, he himself thought that he would be reborn in another world and had to fight. Liang Chang told the man that they had a problem. Zheng Fan asked him what happened. Liang Chang said that according to their orders, they were only responsible for transporting food and supplies. The soldiers should be in front, but he couldn't find any signs that any soldiers had passed through here. Liang Chen continued to say that the target of the attack was the size of the Blitzkrieg force. This prolonged war was not known to any of them, and they only found out about it when they were thrown into the battlefield upon their arrival. Zheng Fan pondered these words, but then Xue San approached in front of him and told the man that he had found something. Zheng Fan asked him what dwarf Xue San said. He said that he had just gone to the supply cart and found Dwarf Shue San lying on the ground with a pebble in his palm. After that, he stated that the cart was filled with some stones a few days later at the military camp in someone's tent. The person told the man that something would likely happen today. Zheng Fan asked him what he saw, and Liang Chang asked the man for his opinion on the current location of Zheng Fan's barracks. Zheng Fan answered first, saying that there is a guaranteed water source here, and the enemy will not be able to block it in any way. He polished his food heater. Currently, Zhang Fan continued by saying that both were given the fact that their camp was in a valley, and they could provide better protection by lowering the defense zone. 
Liang Chang told him that the Lord is very wise, and Zheng Fan thought to himself how rude the flattery felt. They didn't ask for money for this job. Although considering their daily routines, it shouldn't be that simple. Liang Chang said that the lords didn't take it into account. In essence, all of this would apply. If they have the main combat force and they have less than 200 cavalry troops, among them are ordinary people who were forcibly brought here. If several hundred cavalry troops attack them from one side and another detachment launches a surprise attack from another side, it is likely that these farmers will only feel scared and the entire camp will be destroyed from within. Besides, the cavalry accompanying the army has been monitoring them for the past two days. Dwarf Shuesan told the man to taste his soup first and gave him a plate. Zheng Fan said it seems as if they will be used as bait. Zheng Fan brought a plate of soup for him, thinking that there is no point in telling higher-ranking soldiers now. However, the officer disclosed information to the farmers who went with them now. They must protect themselves, and their conditions will allow. He will not hesitate to take advantage of the situation. At night, there was a guard passing by the camp yawning, and someone landed behind him. He covered the man's mouth with one hand and slit his throat with the other. There were several attackers. They ran into the tent. When the man's body fell to the ground, they ran into the camp with knives in their hands entering the tent. Then Liang Chun's hand appeared from the thin air and grabbed the man near the throat. Another man heard the sound of battle and froze as purple energy swept through their throats. It was Dwarf Shua San attacking the man with a knife in his hand. Liang Chun's hand took away the body from the defeated enemy. Then Zheng Fan came out of the tent. He ordered his subordinates to behead them here. A blue arrow pierced the sky. At night he flew and Liang Chang and Zheng Fan were watching their cavalry approaching, shouting for them not to kill them. Take prisoners, Blind B.I. said. They called them blind people. The man asked if he knew his attackers, answering that they were enemies of the Yan kingdom for over a hundred years. They were the type of people who never stop. Zheng Fan stood with Liang Chang and Xiao stood behind the tent. While the barbarians destroyed the camp, they shouted to kill them, and the farmers shouted for help and ran. Zheng Fan thought so. Naturally, they were bait, and because of their faces, the net would soon appear. Dwarf Shor San informed his master that it was also dangerous here. Why didn't they just run away considering all this chaos? As far as he remembered, there were gold rewards and military merits for the heads of the barbarian people. Dwarf Shu San was discussing whether his master really had someone with a truly sinister heart. Then the barbarian noticed them. He rushed to the battlefield while shouting at them. Liang Chen covered Zhang Fan with himself to protect him. He raised his weapon in front of him and Dwarf Shu San rushed into battle with a smile, cutting off the barbarian's head. He held his neck in surprise and fell onto his horse without any strength. The horse didn't rise and Liang Cheng's eyes shone with red fire. Then he raised his hand and red magic spun around them. He used magic to attack the horse and his horse also died. And Liang Cheng caught the barbarian by his throat. He threw him to the ground and called his master. He unsheathed his sword and rushed to the battlefield. He cut the blood on the barbarian's head, attacking Zheng Fan's face and hand fan, and when he tasted it, he said it was extraordinary. Even the sweet little Zheng Fan dropped his sword. Later on, he looked at his hands in shock. Zheng Fan asked about the fact that he had killed someone, and then he thought that the feeling he was experiencing now didn't seem too bad to him. Dwarf Shue San brought him a bag of water and told the man to drink it. Usually, the first murder is the hardest to endure. But once he got used to it, he would be able to appreciate how enjoyable it was. Zheng Fan poured water from the wineskin on his head and thought that the wolves would not let the sheep become the leader of the group. He thought with a smile that if he didn't change his attitude, it would be better to make them think that he also ate the meat he wielded his sword. And said good he was fine now. Zhang Fan thought about what needed to be done so that no one doubted his presence as a real wolf. Another cavalry came here. The barbarian people saw them from the camp. This is where the knights were riding horses. Someone shouted that the final dog would come. However, after that, you must reject your fear and kill them around. Take no prisoners. 
Liang Chang and Zhang Fan watched over them, who were sent to say that he used the lives of ordinary people to lure the turtle into the jar. He asked who he was according to this general, how cruel Liang Cheng was, saying it wouldn't be easy to handle him. Their cavalry could only be here with spears flying quickly towards them. They knocked Zheng Fan to the ground, shouting to the careful lord. Dwarf Shui San saw this huge enemy with great anger, the barbarian. Liang Chang drew his sword and rushed into battle against the enemy, leaping off the ground and engaging in combat with the barbarian, keeping him away from the attack. Zheng Fan shouted to Dwarf Shui San and helped Liang Chen. He would be able to find shelter on his own. He thought they were targeting the item again. Dwarf Shui San laughed while holding Liang Chen's broken sword in his hand. The barbarian told him with a smile. However, his sword broke and he quickly rushed to fight against his opponent Liang Cheng, avoiding the attack. He said, I don't care, he doesn't know how to use it. Besides, the barbarian punched Liang Chen and slammed him against the rock. When he opened his eyes, he was shocked to think how this dog from Ian managed to withstand the onslaught of Liang Chen's blows. His arm separated from his body was cut off. Afterwards, the barbarian returned with magic and screamed in pain while spitting out blood. Liang Chang said that he preferred using claws. Then an arrow flew towards him. It pierced his arm. Liang Chang turned to the side that the barbarian took advantage of his confusion. He kicked him into the carriage. Another barbarian stood with a bow and shouted to Ali Gu to be careful. It was clear that something was wrong as his opponent could easily shoot arrows through ordinary people, but he didn't even have armor on his hands. So why did only the arrow hit his arm? Then Dwarf Shui San shouted that he would do it, suggesting him to look around. Suddenly, Two of his own daggers appeared behind his back and dropped onto the man he screamed in pain. When the Sanzile hit him again, the barbarian who saw this shouted at him, raising his sword towards Liang Chen and yelling that he would kill him. However, Zheng Fan then approached those who raised their swords to attack the man, turned in surprise. He began to spit out blood, screaming that he had been poisoned. He remembered that it happened at the same time when he was attacked by Liang. Chang Jiang killed him with a single blow from his sword. He stabbed his weapon into the ground as Zhang Fan sat on the ground leaning on his sword. Then Liang Chen reached out to help him up. Zhang Fan took his hand as he rose from the ground leaning on Liang Chen. Liang Chen looked at Zhang Fan, remembering the words of blind B.I. He knew that he didn't think highly of their master, but he must not forget that he was the one who created them. If the real world could be compared to a cage, then their master was locked inside it, so they had to provide for him all the conditions so that he could develop peacefully. However, in this case, as their creator, he was the one who would lead them forward to Lion Blind B.E. believed that their master was truly worthy for them to follow. Liang Chen pulled an arrow from his hand and told Zheng Fan that the army had taken control of the situation, but he clearly stated that they had to count their trophies. And Dwarf Shui San approached them, telling the master that it seemed he had caught a big fish. He dragged the barbarian's head, expanding the division, Dwarf Shui San said. If they capture this old man alive, then they will have more confidence. However, following that, Zheng Fan stated that he was sure he saw everything perfectly. Everything that happened here, so he had to kill the barbarian who started screaming demon as the knife was at Dwarf Shui San's throat. The army stood in the middle of the battlefield in the camp. Then the leader on horseback drew his sword and asked who he saw. Zhang Fan, Lan Chang, and Xiao San. Zhang Fan held his head from the barbarian. They had just killed a man, shocked at the thought. The central army was looking for this old man. He raised his hand, thinking about it. This trio was very lucky with their undeniable advantages. However, unfortunately, their reward now belongs to them. The soldiers rushed to fight against Zhang Fan. Liang Chang and Dwarf Shui San informed their master who wanted to be taken by the warriors. Their spoils for themselves, Horseback raised his sword while shouting. Brothers, as he was stabbed with a blow, he fell from his horse. This is the brand of Genbali Qian County, and with him are the seven accompanying him. The elder ordered him to clean up here and come to his tent. Dwarf Shui San inquired Ling Chen about his opinion on them. The master somehow connected this woman to a woman dressing like a man. 
According to the plot, this role usually belongs to dwarf Shuesan, who is sitting in the bathroom and talking about the fact that this woman has a high status and it is only for their benefit. In addition, they compensate for all the losses, as Liang Chang said. He mentioned that this woman is not worthy of Master Dwarf Shuesan's response and they informed him about it. And now he is not even trying to hide his flattering attitude. Liang Chang said that with them, a man can marry the best woman in the world. But he doesn't do it and lets Zio's hand say that he doesn't realize it. Then he said, opening his eyes in surprise, asking Liang Chun what he meant by the power that has returned to them. And whether it will continue to return, he thought the answer lies with his master. Liang Chang said that in front of Zhang Fan they were ordinary people. But now they have regained their power. And more than that, their master has also gained the advantage of power equivalent to ten forever practicing individuals. Dwarf Shuasan shouted exactly, warning his master that the general is a woman. However, he didn't have time to give her the proper advice that Liang Chang asked of him. What advice did Dwarf Xue San say with a smile? And what did he say to Zheng Fan that if the woman doesn't allow him in, then he must do it immediately? Afterwards, it is highly likely that she was taking a shower by chance, and the man will do it. He receives a wave of material benefits, and then Liang Chang finishes his words to him. That later, the girl will order her people to drag him out and cut him into pieces. After that, Dwarf Xue San said that he was a very vulgar Zhang fan who went to the general's tent. He went inside and knelt to greet General Genbalai Qian, saying that he wanted to reward him for his contribution. They made in the fight. He was given two awards to choose from, the first being able to join his private battalion and become a member of his family for life, and the second being able to become a military officer in the ancient city region. But here... Blind B.I. stared at Zheng Fan and told him to forget it. He returned to his Li family. He will not let him have a future, but he doesn't have time to finish it like Zheng Fan said. That he chose the second option, Blind B.I. angrily asked him to dare to look down on his family. Zheng Fan replied that Kutio City was his home, that he couldn't bear to be separated from this place. He thought to himself that he was a kind of idiot according to the girl's opinion, why would he join her family and become himself? His servant no longer talks about the fact that he doesn't even know how his condition died. Interestingly, there is a vegetarian among the seven demon kings that he remembers. Ah Ming Ah Ming stood surrounded by dead bodies, saying that he had dealt with a group of hyenas next in line with the Trinity's unification. Ah Ming then asked his interlocutor that the man had not returned, but he dared to take the initiative to answer the blind man. Sooner or later, the man would return, and they would do trivial things. Meanwhile, having self-awareness and hunger initiative to wipe the bloody dagger, he threw the weapon at the other and talked about it. What about the gang in the carriage located outside the city? He did not remember that the gang was on their list. Blind B.I. said he left this matter with his children and thought it would all end soon. Finally, someone said, in my opinion... It's time to start the gang leader in the carriage hanging in the air tied to the threat of green magic. He shouted what he was doing to them was Feng Xinyang sitting in a chair and staring at him. He asked her with a smile that he liked her a lot. So he poured its contents from the kettle into his mouth, wiping his mouth. Feng Xinyang's eyes burned with purple fire, wondering if God had finished his battle. At night, Zhang Fan, Liang Chang, and Zion stopped the man most likely told that they would reach the farm in a day. However, the master does not need to worry about it. He is sure everything has been included in the message there. The three of them sat near the fire. Dwarf Shuesan said that. But he didn't know if Ali would be like that. Could finally eat. He had a big appetite, so it was quite difficult to find the right amount of food. Outside, Zheng Fan thought it was definitely not easy for them to lick it on behalf of Font lying every day out loud. He suggested Dwarf Shuasan and Liang Chang to eat and rest. Dwarf Shuasan heard footsteps, opened his eyes, and Liang Chang said someone was approaching. They stood up and blocked him. Later on, a girl with a veil on her face mentioned that it was quite windy here, and they needed to find shelter. The girl was surrounded by warriors Zhang Fan, Dwarf Shuasan, and Liang Chang sitting near the bonfire. 
Another girl with her warriors sat not far from them. The girl then stood up and took out a pouch of water, showing it to them. Zhang Fan said that it was quite chilly here, making his throat sore, and he wouldn't be able to drink it, thinking to himself that the next barbarian might have poisoned it. It was usually assumed that he would take the first sip to show his sincerity. However, the girl's intention was to sit back next to the fire. After drinking wineskin with water, she said that she was the head of the barbarians, the lord of the royal hall of the barbarians. She pointed at the children and said they were both grandchildren of the shadow tribe chief. She came here from the royal hall to save them. But Zheng Fan was thinking about the shadow tribe. At that moment, the Li family lured them out, and now they were facing a real enemy. The girl gestured to the side and told them that the Li family seal was depicted on their horses. She asked them if they were family members. She continued angrily, saying that the Marquis of Jenbei County truly lived up to his name. They must have done a good job to meet them here. Zheng Fan stated that, in his opinion, there was a misunderstanding. The girl asked for a misunderstanding that struck the grape bag on the floor, splashing water on her guards who choked on poison, foaming at the mouth. The girl said something rude. A curse of green resurrection magic swirled around her. She rose again, her soldiers' bodies. They transformed into monsters with sharp teeth and burning eyes, ready for a battle they knew. There was something wrong with this girl. Zheng Fan asked Liang Cheng if she could say hello to her relatives. Liang Chang was a former ancient Zhang Shi, a kind of bouncing Chinese vampire in Chinese folklore, a monster rushing towards them. In battle, Liang Chang brought his hand to his mouth immediately. He let out a terrifying roar, opening his mouth, a red wave of magic reaching the girl's soldiers, opening them. But her mouth was shocked. She screamed. Liang Chang managed to get rid of his zombies, controlling how this was possible. He put his two fingers to his forehead and shouted with wicked eyes, opening his eyes to decide that he wanted to understand. The origin of this family servant instantly shocked him. Thinking about it, he was wrong. Liang Chang did not control his zombies. They themselves submitted to his will. Liang Chang let out a terrifying zombie roar. The soldiers turned to the girl they were targeting, attacking her. She tried to escape while two zombies roared at her. Then she attacked one of them, hitting him on the head. She grabbed the children, causing them to wake up. Then Dwarf Shui San appeared behind her, laughing. The girl cursed and the children opened their mouths in fear. Dwarf Shui San pointed a dagger at them, the girl's eyes glowing green. She screamed as green magic enveloped Dwarf Shui San, flying her cloak covered in magic, protecting Zio San. She realized that something was wrong. However, following that, he shouted at the girl that if she had at least a drop of courage, she wouldn't dare to run away. He took the child and fled, running straight towards Zheng Fan and one of his groups shouted. Jin thought that he wanted to pretend that he would go to block the escape route. However, he didn't do it, hoping that he would soon rush in his direction. It was too much to raise his sword to attack. Zhang Fan swung his sword and the girl saw this, throwing the child in front of her. Zhang Fan understood this. The child screamed, and Zheng Fan fought against her. The girl immediately took her dagger and shouted at him that she dared to stop her, and then he was the first person to enter hell. He leaned Zhang Fan's sword against his throat. The girl leaned her sword against Zheng Fan's throat. She screamed angrily that he was going to hell. Zheng Fan moved his sword to his throat and thought that this girl had a very strong grip here, where the bodies of the female warriors flew. They were intercepted by Liang Chang. Later on, the girl took off and the soldiers hit the ground where she had previously stood. Zheng Fan raised his head and saw the girl rushing towards him. He was preparing to fend off the attack. But then, Dwarf Shui San approached the girl from behind, stabbing his dagger into her back. Blood spurted from the girl's wound as she screamed in pain. She grabbed one of the children and tried to escape, shouting to Zeus. She truly thought she could escape. But someone told her not to follow the girl. Dwarf Shuai-san turned around in shock upon hearing Liang Chang's voice, who was sitting on the ground and talking about his condition. It was quite difficult to control two zombies at the moment. He had reached his limit and had no strength left for the next battle. Liang Chang asked Xiao san if he was going after the girl, then who would protect their lord. Xiao san approached Zheng Fan, 
and said that their master's insight was at a divine level. He was able to anticipate the situation on the battlefield and could be at the forefront against their enemies, blocking them. He greatly admired Zheng Fan. He replied in frustration as he failed to stop him. Then Zheng Fan asked Xiao San with a smile if his dagger was poisoned. No. He also smiled in response and said that the man was so cruel that he liked it far away in the desert from them. However, the girl with the dagger in her back fell to the ground, her clothes soaked and blood at the point of impact. However, it is said that unfortunately the dagger is clearly poisonous. But regardless of what the family's task must be completed, he looked ahead and with a surprised expression on his face asked, Lord Abe, and what is he doing here in front of him? There are three robed figures, and behind them, there are lying fans standing in the middle, asking the girl about what happened to the young man. And where he is, the girl shouted to everyone about where they are. Their leader is, she must be ordered to gather. The soldiers immediately, Marquis Gen Anak Bay's subordinates, are in that direction, there are some of them. Soldiers must go there and eliminate them. Then, after that, the soldiers rushed in the direction indicated by the girl saying that they understand everything and waved it off. However, he still stood beside her. He stared intently at the dagger on the girl's back. She saw his gaze and asked who he was staring at. Fan Lai, who drew his weapon, answered that he was staring at him. Shortly after, Zheng Fan asked the lying fan if he recognized the Zhu sending the dagger. He answered the man exactly like that. Dwarf Shui San sharpened it in the courtyard for six months. Zhang Fan asked Fen if he lied to stab the woman. She answered yes. Feng Xinyang saw how Fen Lai drank it, offering water from a wine pouch and thinking that she did not expect it. There would be spies among them, caravan followed by lies, and coincidentally, he met this woman on the journey. In the end, everything changed this time. His fate was quite good, clearly by Zhang Fan's side. He thought that he couldn't kill two children if in a few decades the rulers of the Tanjayo desert generation wanted to take revenge on him. He would just kneel in front of them, Fan Li holding something in his hand to Liang Chen and Xiao San. He took a blade of grass and asked what shallots were. However, he answered that after eating this, they would both experience an unprecedented surge of energy. He had been eating it for a few days. Shiosan answered him with simple words. People with simple lives nowadays. The ambassador of the Wenju County Zoo was sitting at the table with him, his hand pressed to his head. He asked someone if Marquis and the woman would be able to survive all of this. However, a servant with a tray in his hand answered that Marquis was a very lucky man. However, Zheng Fan, who had just left, was recommended by the woman herself. He asked the zoo about it, that he really went to ignore this fact. After that, he took a cup from the tray, removed the lid, and enthusiastically shouted that it was Zheng Fan, a commoner who even had 300 horses too many for him. But even though they gave him food and salary, Zheng Fan would dare to follow the rebellion flag when the Marquis was in trouble, Xuanzu said. If Zheng Fan had the ability to deploy his troops, then he would recognize him. However, Zheng Fan was very surprised by something he stood in front of the entrance to the next house. For him, we lied. Liang Cheng and Dwarf Shou San, the latter standing in front of his master, put his hands in front of him in defense. Zheng Fan asked what was happening, but as he asked into the emptiness of where everyone had gone. Afterwards, a servant named Zheng Fan shouted, Sir, you're back. Zheng Fan asked the servant what had happened here. The servant told Zheng Fan to relax and explained that Mr. Yang and Mr. Bei had just bought a new house and asked the servant to stay on guard. If their master returned, they were to inform him. Once they had obtained the desired amount of money, they would move to a bigger place. At the corner of the street, everyone had already moved to the new house. However, Someone mentioned that the monthly salary of an official in Kudo City would double according to their position. They were new here and just starting out, so now they had to show everyone their sincerity. Ah Ming, Blind B.I., and Feng Xin Yang were sitting in a luxurious room. Blind B.I., who could speak, said that it was a group of hyenas engaged in human trafficking. However, they only stopped him for that purpose, for the sake of their master. 
Aming asked him if it wasn't their relationship. The blind man replied to blind B.I. that, as he had said before, their master was an enlightened creator. If Shang Fan didn't want to overcome their religious issues, Feng Xinyang said that as far as she remembered, blind manga was connected to a similar topic. However, in the end, it was indeed concluded that way. He continued by saying that if their future business grows rapidly, they will not have any problems. Zheng Fan was singing while sitting with a glass of wine in his hand and saying that they have been working together for a long time. They didn't think it would be easier to make money by creating soap. But Blind Bei Yi turned out to be the owner. When Feng Xinyang drank from a glass, someone shouted that the master was back, and they all returned. A few moments later, Zheng Fan was sitting in a hot tub while three girls watched him. However, one of them asked the man about his ownership. Then, after that, Ah Ming lied about the temperature, and Feng Xinyang was sitting at a half-empty table. Then, the plate with leftovers from Thanksgiving dinner told the blind man, Blind B.I., when he asked, that he arranged the best bath because Mr. Ah Ming asked if it was according to his liking. This was also not true. He thought that God would not decide to disturb Blind B.I. The reply they all had to wait for was Dwarf Shue San, with his eyes closed, saying how low their efforts were to seduce them. Master Liang Chen spoke with difficulty, and the fan light hit his lips. Blind B.A. said that the master should always be able to reap the benefits of their development now that their conditions have improved. They should do it again and give him a chance to make a choice. Ah Ming interrupted him with those words, enough to make him cry, convinced that it would happen if Zheng Fan didn't like it here. Zhang Fan asked everyone if they had eaten and drank, and he continued with a smile saying that if that's the case, then it's worth starting the business. After that, Tepi made Dwarf Shuasan happily say that at that time it was already too late. His master had already severed ties with Feng Xinyang. The escape route said that this was expected of them. Lord Xion said so. If that's the case, let them listen carefully to what happens. Furthermore, Zheng Fan studied the book and pondered it with a lick like that. And it's not surprising that ancient kings easily poisoned various things. But blindly based on human nature, standing next to Zhang Fan. And he said that this morning, his subordinates wanted to organize a band group outside the city, hoping that the man would be able to gain recognition from the administration. It would only benefit them if Zheng Fan thought that the blind man had the blind BEI spiritual detection that he should have. However, he realized that he almost fell. Zheng Fan, who was asleep, decided that he had to behave like an emperor and fill the entire room with his presence. Zheng Fan told Blind Bei that he left everything, questions about how to use this group and how to develop it. Kudo City is their first stop, after which they will start expanding their influence zone. Liang Chang said that they couldn't waste the 300 horses given to them by Kudo City. Blind B.I. answered that of course their next goal is only about this difficult fact, the army belonging to the Yan Empire, but in reality, they are only loyal to them. The blind man, Bei told Dwarf Shua San, and he lied that they did indeed integrate their old group since they both returned. He handed it over to them. Zio Sin said okay tomorrow he will leave together with Feng Xin Yang to train new girls that he can choose the best of them for special training. But Blind B.A. kept telling Liang Chun that he and his teacher should practice a little together before they go to Yaman. Yang Chun also had to let them lords even give him some tips. If it's very simple, he will need them abroad. Zheng Fan thinks about what he can suggest to the blind man. Liang Chun, Blind B.I., told the lord that he had finished and asked him to make his adjustments. Then after that, Zheng Fan replied to him that he had said everything and he thought about it to himself because they, the dirt, kept increasing jumps and limits. Then someone raised his hand and said, Stop! This is Ah Ming asking about how he, the blind man, said Bei that Ah Ming would get the most important mission in response. He asked a question, and how Mei could forget it. Blind Bia said he was blind. Ah Ming didn't know what to say to the blind man. Blind Bii said to feed 300 cavalry that they needed a large amount of money. However, after that, Ah Ming asked what Lion Man Blind B should do that he would do it to take the soap that Ah Ming didn't know what to say. However, after that, 
It was said to Zheng Fan that it was already too late with all the bang, boom, ding sounds. Zhang Fan replied well, standing in his pants, sweating profusely. Zhang Fan thought to himself that he had trained and been beaten for three consecutive days, but fortunately his physical strength had improved. Zhang Fan asked Liang Chen if he was sure he didn't want to swim with him. Liang Chang replied that he didn't like hot water and men should go without him. Zheng Fan left saying okay. Then he would call Feng Xinyang. After that, Aming went and told Feng Xinyang that they would release the soap first to make a lot of money. Then they would develop perfume and many more different products. Feng Xinyang answered that they had to play big or not play at all. Only this way they would be able to achieve the highest profit in a short time. Feng Xinyang noticed something. She noticed that Zheng Fan was not with them. Liang Chen and Feng Xinyang started shouting. She ran towards Ah Ming, shouting at him that it was all his fault. She forgot to give him the man who was massaged. Feng Xinyang shouted at the man, saying that he had become like that, coming hungry and confusingly. As Feng Xinyang ran away, Ah Ming asked Liang Chen if her aura had become stronger. Liang Chang answered that it hadn't, and he believed that the problem lay with them. Ah Ming said that it seemed like everything didn't depend on their own efforts. According to him, they wouldn't achieve anything, as Ah Ming said. Liang Chen believes that a different approach is needed for the example. They both then noticed a piece of soap lying on the ground, with hunger telling Liang Chen who was bending down to get the soap he had developed. This sample is new and he can use it. Blind Bei appeared behind their backs and said that indeed it was so. Ah Ming asked him if something had happened. Blind Bei replied that there would be a meeting at the pavilion. Tonight, he left them saying that this was all he wanted to say, and they could continue. However, he added while moving how lucky they were that he was blind, and blind did not see anything, they did not know what to say to him. Later in the evening, Feng Xinyang talked about what this zombie was thinking about himself. She was generally familiar with the concept of delicacy. Zheng Fan said not to bring it into himself. His head he had already managed to relax, Feng Xinyang told the man that she could think of another way for him. And the carriage gave Zheng Fan a massage while lying down. He told him that they would talk about it later, as far as he could see there was nothing wrong with training his body. Feng Xinyang asked Zheng Fan about it. Maybe he should ask Ah Ming to bite him. However, after that, Zheng Fan asked about her offering to turn him into a vampire. But Feng Xinyang replied considering Ah Ming's current condition. The number of vampire conversions is limited. Such opportunities are unlikely to be given to newcomers later on in the meeting today. The topic of today's meeting was announced. Cultivation. Blind people sat at the table and told Liang Chen that they needed to talk about cultivation. Over the past few days, everyone has been so present at the meeting lying, but he was hungry. Feng Xinyang, Xiao San, Blind Bei, and Liang Chang answered. However, before that, the man had no combat experience and lacked skills, and his reactions were rather slow. Liang Chang added that the power of Lord Zhang was truly extraordinary. Zheng Fan only woke up a month ago, and he did not have time to fully recover. However, at present, Zheng Fan's strength is comparable to that of an adult who regularly practices martial arts, the basics of a blind person. He said that he had always been interested in one of them questioning the actual relationship between their power and the power of their master. And the principle of unconditional indulgence remains and is unshakable. However, the problem is that he is blind. He raised his finger and said that they had successfully recovered some of their strength. But it turns out that progress has not stopped, Feng Xinyang asked, and blind B.I. to find out who he learned from and tell them. Blind B.I. answered that his guess was the most likely, and their recovery speed is directly related to the power of their master. And if you look at the situation from the perspective of an online game where they are still children, of course, their level cannot exceed the level stated by Master Liang Chang. In other words, because he is there, they are still at the first level. Later on, he stated that the growth rate of the master solely depended on his own inner strength. However, the master pressed blind B.I. to answer his question, saying that he was lying as he scratched his head. 
He mentioned that if he were to cut off his master, this restriction would apply to everyone present. After this question, silence fell. Blind B.I. pondered over the lie, questioning whether they should cut off their limitations on their master. Their growth abilities would be elevated. Then, Liang Chong placed the kettle on the table and said that when they were still ordinary people, they swore to let him be. He chose it himself, so they wanted to protect him. He poured water from the kettle into the cup, hungering for it, and took the cup in his hand. Liang Chang continued to talk about how now, after they did it, they regained some of their power and became insatiable. Then, he continued to say that he was ashamed. He knew that he was not suitable for those things. Nevertheless, he invited everyone to drink this wine and forget about what was said here, just like with other bad thoughts. But Feng Xinyang dropped her wine glass. Dwarf Shuasan also drank the wine. Ah Ming stood with a glass in his hand, everyone drinking the wine. The blind man at the base said that he ordered them all to find out if a player died. The creature summoned by him could not continue its existence, and therefore they can only become stronger by enhancing the power of their teachers. Blind BEI continued to say that their cultivation system was not suitable for them, which is why they had to seek it elsewhere. Teacher Feng Xinyang told Blind BAI that she called them here to inform them that they could only connect with the master by hiring a teacher for him. Ah Ming asked Blind Bei why he didn't tell them about it earlier. What was the problem? Then, Dwarf Xue San spoke up and told Blind Bei that it was embarrassing. He laughed and said that honestly, he didn't do it hoping Zheng Fan would say it out loud. Either way, Feng Xinyang asked if she should be blamed. Feng Xinyang and the lying fan stood on the rock. Then Feng Xinyang recounted the blind man's perspective, that he instructed his servant to ask his master to wait for their return. Behind them, blind Bei Ai sat surrounded by Ah Ming, Lang Zhang, and Sayo Sam. Feng Xinyang asked blind Bei if he was sure the teacher would be held here. He replied that they had discussed everything last night, and today they even found their purpose. Then Shio San asked Blind B.A. if he had thought everything through from the beginning, that he wasn't blind. Bay said it in their language. He shouldn't have done it. The fact is that the captain's wife sent him a message through his assistant. Today her husband was scheduled to have a business trip, and she asked him to send her water charm to help her get pregnant. Dwarf Shui San chuckled upon hearing Blind Bay's words. He watched as Blind Bay drew patterns in the sand and mentioned that the servant had also said that today, one bandit would be sent to a neighboring city for testing. In addition, as a former official, he was also a martial artist. Dwarf Xue San stated that a recognized martial artist like him was a perfect fit for the role of teacher for Master Liang Chang. They asked about the size of their convoy and whether they would go hungry. Dwarf Xue San replied that as far as he knew, they seemed to have not been able to defeat him. Then, he told them that because of this, his chances as a teacher had been greatly reduced. Blind BEI mentioned that last night they were discussing suitable candidates for the role of teacher for their master, and today they found a suitable target, and what its function meant. It meant that heaven was on their side. The master gave them this opportunity. It was the destiny that God watched over them. They couldn't ignore their God's desire. They had to follow their destiny. It was an honor for them to follow it. Master Seo shouted at Blind B.I. that he was truly foolish beyond his expectations. The man wasn't here, so why did he decide to step in front of him? Then, Zheng Fan approached them on a horseback and shouted at Blind B.I. that he was cheating on him. Zheng Fan's spiritual detection on horseback approached them. He asked who they would encounter. He was a teacher. He said they didn't have the aspirations they thought of. Zheng Fan thought to himself that when others looked for him as a teacher, they sought a relationship where they could discuss something. However, when it comes to him, they directly try to steal someone, Dwarf Xue San said. Sir, but Blind Bi placed his hand on his shoulder and mentally told him to shut up. Blind Bi said that they had successfully reached a large network of stalls and would soon be hunted down for it. And at that moment, their only defense was their own strength. So Zheng Fan said, okay, they could make the necessary decisions blindly. However, Blind B.I. thought now was not the time to tell his master that he could hold them back. 
If not, their power would certainly start thinking about it. Zheng Fan said Lai last night, and in this case, their relationship would be in danger. Blind B.I. said it loudly since then, the master had given them permission. They had to be ready this time. All six of them would participate. Then, after that, Blind B.I. corrected himself by saying the seventh thing. He asked everyone if everything was clear to them. Liang Chang and Xiao San thought that Blind Bei was a blind scoundrel who did not consider his master to be an ordinary person. Dwarf Xue San told Zheng Fan that he had just returned from the tiles and found that another group was following their target, and it seemed to be getting more confusing. This time, Blind B.I. told the man that they were waiting for his decision. Then, Zheng Fan answered that it was difficult to find a good teacher. In his time here, the columns passed their place. Zheng Fan said that according to the saying, lovers catch crickets, while sparrows catch them waiting behind, and isn't that better? After that, a sparrow wiped its beak with a smile, and the knight's handkerchief fell into the crowd of people rushing to attack, shouting that the enemy was attacking one of the guards who drew his sword, as told by the man sitting in the guard's cage. Where did these people come from? Feng Liu, in the north, knew about them dealing with barbarians, and they didn't want him to escape. He said to the guard, calling him, Then after that, take your men away. This was Captain Patrol from the city of Hudowang Lai, who took out his sword and rushed into battle while sitting astride his horse. The man in the cage shouted behind him, which he didn't mention, that his daughter-in-law was pregnant. He shouldn't die in vain. However, despite his cries to return, the man sadly said that his guard could survive. So why was he like this? He used to be the former captain of Kudo City, Ding Ju, who was here. Their guards covered their ears. Blind Bei played music and asked where he could find his friend's chest in this world, while the guards hurriedly pulled out their weapons, laughing. They attacked the guards with silver threads, and they died. Liang Chang and Ah Ming also rushed to fight with them. However, they didn't stay still and rushed towards the deceitful fan, bringing him down. Ah Ming, Lang Chang, and Xiao San covered their desire to retreat and Feng Xinyang cleared the way for them. They would escape from here. Then Wang Lai sat halfway on the ground and coughed in pain. He fell to the ground without the strength to run as the enemy approached, pulling out his weapon. He started playing the musical instrument again, and his enemy was taken aback. If this killer could defeat the little Lai, then he must be on the verge of level 9. He didn't understand why this blind person killed the guard so easily, blinding blind B.I. informed him that it was time for them to do it. He quickly followed him. He turned to the blind person and asked if he could convey his last words to his wife. Then after that, he sighed and asked the soldier not to worry. And he would take care of Zhang Fan, looking ahead here. He was hit by something that made him rush towards him all the time with a man on his shoulder. Zheng Fan screamed and quickly lit a lamp, placing the man on the horse. Then, after that, the man ran past him, shouting. Then Zheng Fan stretched out his hand and asked him to wait a moment. Then a few moments later, Zheng Fan was sitting at the table with Blind B.I. and Feng Xinyang behind him. Blind Bei said it took them some time to get rid of the enemy. Luckily, his teacher Fan was not injured and sent him back first. Zheng Fan spoke well as the answer he requested allowing his teacher to come down. Blind Bay congratulated the man who said he now had a teacher, and the fan thought that way, he finally got his teacher back. Dwarf Shuesan told the man what it looked like, everything went wrong. When the fan's lie happened again, the city, which he thought was indeed like that, became somewhat restless. But it seems that his teacher died. Zheng Fan thought so. It's some kind of joke. The next day, Zhang Fan stood and gazed at the blind man, Blind B.I., and the man lying on the grass. Zhang Fan asked Blind Bei if the man was still alive, thinking to himself that he had spent the whole day with them and the people they brought back were some kinds of joke. The blind man, Blind B.I., checked the pulse of the man and called his master. He spoke about the time when he was a psychiatrist. Zhang Fan immediately added sadly that there was no hope of recovery. He had no pulse or breathing, based on the blind man as well. Then he offered to bury the man. However, he quickly added that if they buried him, there would be a great loss. 
I remember they had a beautiful flower garden in it. The backyard? He suggested cutting him into several pieces and using them as fertilizer. They should do the same with him as with the others before him. Zhang Fan closed his eyes and said, Okay, he agreed. However, he thought to himself, That next to blind B.I., but he might always feel out of place. That's because he's not crazy enough, there's that voice. He had already woken up soon, the blind man shouted to blind B.I.I. to see that the teacher had awakened as expected from his teacher tainted by the Lord's dacha. He still deserved help from the blind man heaven. Afterwards, blind B.I. informed Zheng Fan that before they could call this person, they needed to discuss the necessary etiquette with their teacher. Therefore, he asked to hand over this case to his subordinate. He was confident that starting tomorrow, Zhang Fan would be able to begin his training. Zhang Fan asked Blind Bei to be polite to the teacher and not to be rude to him based on his blindness. With Feng Xinyang, he told her that as far as they knew, he was indeed a martial artist and they needed to talk about it. Blind B.I. said that if Dingru agreed to teach their teacher martial arts, then they would ensure his safety. Dang Zhu said that it was like what he said, he didn't remember agreeing to become their master. Such words from the teacher made Feng Xinyang angry. She said that seeing a large number of heroes turn into true cowards. After being tortured blindly, the base man said that after all this happened, their teacher and his teacher taught them to convince people with the help of virtue. But then he suddenly remembered that the day after tomorrow, Captain Patrol Wang Lai's wife owed him a sum of money. He revealed this revelation to Feng Xinyang, that he could go there now and cut off these words from his whole family. Angry blind man, blind B.I. pretended not to see his reaction and asked for forgiveness for the personal matter they had to deal with. So it is said that Dingru lowered his head and said that he agreed. Dingru thought so little of himself. His daughter-in-law was pregnant, but he lost his life trying to protect her. Should he involve his family in this matter because of a small thing? Blind B.I. said. He left while saying that he thought about it and decided that they should do it. Not cutting off the whole family for a few people. And that goes against what their lord taught them, so they should forget about it. Blind B.I. told Master Dean that from now on he would stay here. So far, all the information they were ready to give him. If indeed satisfied with the quality of their training, they would be ready to discuss with him. Further compensation, for example, they might consider restoring his cultivation condition before he was injured. He looked surprised at Blind B.I. and asked if he was trying to deceive him. Blind B.I. answered no. They just treated their people very well. Generously, he left while saying that he promised Dingru that on the day when his lordship reached cultivation, he would help him regain his strength. After that, he would be able to take revenge on the so-called Northern Feng Liu family alone. He managed to build a good relationship with their lord, and if he gave them orders, they would help him settle his revenge a little. Then, Blind Bei stood near the tree and said to Fang Sinindat, saying that he must convince people with the help of virtue that he should not think about it. Torture all the time is too primitive. Feng Xinyang closed her eyes and said it was true. He gave her a worthy lesson. She continued by saying that she knew he was a real demon. Blind B.I. informed Feng Xinyang that the baby in her womb did not come from her. He asked her with a smile that he was a blind man who was infertile. Blind B.I. replied that he did not touch her, but only forced her to drink drugged water and used it to help her control her emotions. She calmed her emotions and successfully became pregnant. Feng Xinyang sighed and talked about what she had not told him before, thinking that she was ready to part with her own child. She was afraid that the blind people's base would say that she was pure and noble, but instead she was dirty and evil. She asked Feng Xinyang if she could call Ah Ming here. Then, after that, Blind Bei continued to say that. In a few moments, he would ask Kai for their soldier's circulation card. He had to take it and place it on Ah Ming's body. Feng Xinyang said that if the needle got stuck in Ah Ming's body, it would hurt him. Blind B.A. asked Feng Xinyang if she could endure it. After that, he licked his lips and said he couldn't enter someone's house, saying that every family has their own martial arts training method that their family needs to concentrate on Kai in an empty point coin. The man's body was showered, and his question was at this point here. 
This is Feng Xinyang, who stuck a needle into Ah Ming's body. He continued by saying that after that, Kai gathered at this time, divided into five blind people. He said that Kai would move towards the head and limbs of Ah Ming, saying that it was the wrong step and he was a corpse. Feng Xinyang asked him not to worry. She knew what she was doing. The things you asked, Mr. Blind Bay Eye. Why don't they draw this diagram on paper? He answered that everything would be fine. The drawing would not be fine. It would be informative enough and the human body would be perfect for visual examples that Feng Xinyang asked to continue. He asked Salmon to focus his strength in his body and use his heart and lungs as a gas pedal. He needs to accelerate Kai's flow with the help of his blood circulation repeatedly. Ah Ming replied that after repeating the cycle several times, they would be able to accelerate all bodily functions, thus strengthening them multiple times, and then the body would start to shine, Dingru said. If his body starts to shine, it will mean that the threshold of the martial arts realm has been reached. He will be able to take on a small leadership role in the army. It takes ten years to reach level nine. After that, martial artists and even periods like that were considered the basis of blind people who were quite fast. It is said that the necessary route to try is already displayed on the body. Ah Ming, as soon as he could easily follow the response. Ah Ming said that he was a vampire and didn't know anything about Kai and blind people. Blind Bay's blood said maybe this is true. But however, Ah Ming was able to control the blood. You just need to direct it to the right place. If the blood moves fast enough, it will be able to attract the wind, and this wind will become Kai. They need Ah Ming to answer that it needs to be difficult to refute his words. However, he said that there is no need to put all the effort at once. It needs to be done gradually first. He needs to strengthen his body and achieve a strong physique no matter how lucky someone is. This risk cannot be reduced in any way, and he won't be able to achieve everything at once. When they arrived here, Energy began to shimmer around Ah Ming, and Zhu repeated this in surprise. He thought to himself that Ah Ming had just collapsed on Feng Xinyang's table, and she put her hand on her cheek. She said it was pink for a young girl. She liked it. Next, Ah Ming told her that it's not her age. Fang Xingen told her that it's much better than blind people's red. Blind B.I. told Ah Ming that she will dress up soon. She also wants to try Ah Ming, asked the blind person. Blind B.I., who is she blind then what's the difference to her? Whether she is dressed or not, the blind person Bass said. That he wants to feel himself in a blue energy ceremony that starts spinning around blind B.I. Later, he mentioned that it was quite simple, noting that the blue color was not bad. It was Zeos that was quite ancient and unique, and seeing this indicated that it was the same cultivation system created for their blind master. Blind B.I. told Zion Fan Lai and Liang Chen that it was indeed accurate. In time, they should try it too, Ah Ming said. That he wanted to dress in energy, Yang Chen was Ah Ming's purple, laughing at him. However, Fang Xingen told him who wanted to talk about the green energy swirl around Dwarf Shua San, and he asked if he could change its color, maybe repaint it. Feng Xinyang laughed, saying that she congratulated him. The natural color itself would help him hide. When attacked in the wilderness, they were interrupted by the shining fan of the blind yellow people's base saying that, while they could only reach half of the ninth level journey. The next step is, he said, that honestly this process is quite simple in his opinion. However, they will do it and cannot rush it. Besides, they are all held back by an invisible barrier. Therefore, their next steps are very simple. Blind B.I. shouted loudly that they must do everything possible to help their master during the day. The next day, someone said this is usually how they express their self-defense skills, and the question is whether everything is clear. Zhang Fan clenched his fists and said exactly what he should do, understanding Feng Xinyang and Ah Ming standing behind him. Zhang Fan stood concentrating and thinking that he was fair listening to many theories and seeing a few lines on Ah Ming's body. But that was all he needed to do to ascend to heaven. Then, according to him, they all considered him too high. He looked towards Master Dingru and thought that he seemed like a very ordinary person too. He wasn't as crazy as the other blind man told Mr. Dean. If there was an easier way like external stimulation. The master started from scratch. So he needed something simpler 
and more straightforward instructions. Ding Zhu said it was indeed much harder for some people to feel Kai's presence in their bodies, so they had to bring ear powder to stimulate their evil Kai. He attacked someone's body with his aura to confuse the blind. Kai, who was mentioned by blind B.I. Liang Chen, used his evil Kai to stimulate the meridians. The teacher spoke well, but his Kai was pure and controllable, but it would be a little harmful. He pointed forward with his finger, directing his Kai. He placed his finger on his chest. Zhang Fan directed his Kai into his fan pole, feeling a slight displacement and numbness. He experienced a little pain in his body. Then, Zheng Fan opened his eyes and foam started coming out of his mouth. Dwarf Shesan San shouted at Liang Chen to stop. He released his finger from Zheng Fan's chest. Amin asked Liang Chen if he had infected the man with corpse poison. Liang Chang answered that it was indeed true. He was sure that not a drop of corpse poison had entered Zheng Fan's body. Zheng Fan sank to the floor where he was held by Feng Xinyang and Zio Sam. He shouted that Liang Chen was the one he called the blind one, Bei, who asked him to stimulate the master with the help of his evil Kai. His eyes glowed with purple fire as he continued to shout at Liang Chen that he had done a good job. Because the man had almost caused himself to suffer from Alzheimer's disease, Liang Chang said it was beyond question that he had only poured out a small part of his evil deeds. Kai entered the master's body and gave him his current level of power which shouldn't be as bad as it was. Ding Ju said that maybe the reason was that his reaction was due to his very dense blood, and Kai flowing inside him looked like a pile of dry wood. Liang Chang burned the blind man. Kai's blind servant, B.I., asked what it meant that their master had a tendency for martial arts. Feng Xinyang, A Ming, and Liang Chang were happy about this, as it meant their master was very strong. Then the blind human sat next to Zhang Fan's bed and opened his own eyes. The blind man, B.I., asked General Pan how he felt. He felt Kai Jiang's fan, his admirer answered yes. He felt very dense, Ding Zhu said, as when an ordinary person starts to learn martial arts. However, initially he could only feel small drops of blood flowing through his body. But at the moment, Zheng Fan could feel the dense circulation of Kai. And the blind Bei was fine. Bei congratulated everyone in his trust and told the man that he was very talented, congratulating him. A great fate awaited them. They all looked at blind Bei and thought that they were almost letting this strange person suck their master first. Zheng Fan raised his hand, asking them not to do it, making a little noise. Then at night, the blind. Someone might ask Sile San why he went to Ding Hao, he answered that he wanted to ask what kind of food could help someone improve their skills. Maybe it could help their master increase his power from 9 to 8, or even a blind person at level 7. Blind B.I. said that in this case they might face the consequences of too fast growth. But suddenly his master would be stuck forever at level 7. In this case the same fate awaited them based on the blind person smiled and told Zion the others, and that he advised him not to become smart. If they knew that he would give him some kind of blind person's mastery, the blind person started laughing. Dwarf Xue San said so if he didn't really plan to give it to him, the blind person. Blind B.A. gazed at the sky and remarked that they were going a little overboard. Today they tried to take a bite that was too big. None of them knew for sure when Mo Wang would wake up. Dwarf Xue San asked how it related to them. Mo Wang smiled and the conversation revolved around what would happen. If they continued to put pressure on their lord like that today, he might want to stay with them. Even more, or he decided to live with groans, Shiosan told Blind Bay that he acknowledged that he was always quiet, smart, and could always read others. However, Blind Bay did not know anything about Mo Wang's character and habits. Bay wondered why Mo Wang had not yet opened his seal. Blind B.I. asked Dwarf Shui San. What could he tell her? Dwarf Shui San said it was up to him. If Mo Wang really woke up, the first thing he would do is kill them, take control, and leave this world. However, Mo Wang shouted at Zheng Fan about whether he deserved to be his father. Zheng Fan lay in the hot spring in Feng Xinyang's courtyard while she sat on the ground next to him. She asked him if he liked this vineyard. Because it seemed too big for him, the best vineyard should be a little smaller and have a creamy taste. 
Zheng Fan replied that there was no need to say vulgar words like that. Later that night, Feng Xinyang placed a glass of wine in Zheng Fan's open mouth and asked the man if he had pushed him too hard. He replied that it was not only that, but today he felt like he had caught a fever just because of Kai's wrongdoing. Of course, this was unpleasant enough. Feng Xinyang asked if she should give him a massage. Zhang Fan replied, no, he would stay here a little longer. And then he would go to sleep, as classes were scheduled for tomorrow. Feng Xinyang left with a plate of grapes and said that she would leave him alone and pray for him. Rest well, Feng Xinyang thought to herself that even so, God was just a regular person. At the same time, he was the one who created everything, including the horror manga author. Still, she had to be someone important and lonely. Feng Xinyang felt like she had pushed him too hard. She thought maybe she should tell her master the truth that Zheng Fan had said. After his departure, it was unpleasant. But she couldn't add strength to anything else. She didn't understand why friends even showed respect to such an annoying man like him. Wasn't everything strange here? Zheng Fan caught the attention of Lying Stone. He said Sun Xiang emerged from the water leaving. Zheng Fan told the story of the stone where his son was imprisoned, that his father missed him. After that, the stone began to shine green like the water around it. The stone flew up into the air, spinning around, the symbol on the stone shining green. After that, a blind man who was sitting at the table and writing something here. He was very surprised by something he said to Mo Wan. He felt a very strong thirst for murder and wondered whether it was directed at him or the intention to kill was directed at Mo Wang's father. In the evening, Zheng Fan walked through the courtyard with Zheng Fan. Feng Xinyang said that the people who were forced to deliver food had returned. How many of them had managed to survive from that answer? Then, after that, Feng Xinyang, who seemed to have only a few hundred survivors from this morning, most of the families in the city began to hold funerals. In front of them were the people in the funeral procession. Feng Xinyang told the man that she was back, and right after his excess, so he preceded them a few days before the person died. This time, according to her, that soon there will be another population census in the city of Kudo. Then Zhang Fan replied that they actually accepted refugees to maintain their tax revenue. Liang Cheng approached them and called the man he approached them and told them that the judge had just sent an order that they must appear in court before noon. Then Zheng Fan asked about something that would happen later. Zheng Fan left the blind B.I. building, informing the man that he congratulated him. Now they became members of the council. Zheng Fan replied that the next step they should take advantage of this provision from blind B.I. He rolled up the document and told the man that he heard that he continued by saying that the issue of orphans would be discussed at this meeting with Zheng Fan. He said that hundreds of orphaned children had been admitted to the orphanage today due to the war, and he believed that there would be more of them in the future that they planned to take care of. Then, Lieutenant Zhang Fan from all levels continued to say that it was good. He managed to make some cigarettes into blind B.I. He replied to the man that, in his opinion, they should reconsider the decision to adopt orphaned children. Yang Chang said that it was because this was an order from above they would be forced to take one or two more children and also distribute these children according to their power and influence. But every time Blind B.I. answered that, he said he opposed this idea instead. In his opinion, it would be too few. Liang Chang asked Blind B.I. about how many orphaned children he needed. Blind B.I. replied that he needed all of them. He kept saying that if they got all the orphaned children, they would have an empty house in their hands where they could arrange a shelter. Liang Chang asked Blind Bei Ai if he was crazy. He would open a shelter. Zheng Fan felt that way, according to him. This was the consequence of 404. However, the rule that the manual applies to blind people. Blind Bei told the man that he thought about it only because he wanted to personally nurture the future generation of people. Blind B.I. turned on Feng Xin Yang and said that this way they would be able to get rid of defective products that did not fit their plans. And even at the beginning of the journey, besides this way, 
they would be able to win the love and attention of everyone, and Zhang Fan lit a cigarette. He answered Blind Bay that it was much easier for him to understand when Zhang Fan expressed himself. In this way, he told the blind person and Liang Chen that it was time for them to return. They have a lot of work ahead of them. Then he told Jen Fan that according to him, they could complete their training today, which should be done by Jiang's fans remembering this feeling tomorrow. Try to speed up this process, Zheng Fan asked Dingru how long he had to shine like this. He sat with his legs bent with yellow energy shimmering around him. Then he answered him that rushing would not speed up the journey towards the goal. Even the current progress he could achieve halfway to the ninth level in three days. And that is the most in two months. Later on, he will be able to fully reach the stage as mentioned by Fan Xiang so that the master can rest today. He will come back tomorrow afternoon as Ruth smiles again. Zhang Fan leaves Dingru alone. After he left, Dingru thought like that, except for those six psychopaths who reached halfway to the ninth level in the blink of an eye. This person's talent scared him. He remembered that they said he was teaching them, but it was more like they were holding him back, with Julian's head against his hand, wondering, are all these people really his disciples? Some major sects enjoy a peaceful life. Later on, at another time, Zheng Fan was sitting in a chair, and Blind B.I. stood next to him and said that to the man. After lunch, he and Sam will go to a company soap and perfume to be sold in the city of Tuman, and Ali and the other two will go back to the desert to see if they can bring more people here. However, later on, Zheng Fan lit a cigarette and asked if those three people would definitely be enough for this task. Blind B.I. answered that he warned them not to take any action unless they were completely sure. Blind B.I. said that considering the high speed of their movements, they would need about a month to search for information. Zhang Fan responded that he didn't quite understand what Bei meant by calling someone blind. Bei said that what he meant was that he didn't need to worry about thinking about himself about it. The month would be enough for the master to reach the ninth level blind man's headquarters, as they five were not present when it started tomorrow night. He would be next to him his 24-7 fan choking on smoke. After these words, Zheng Fan cleared his throat and asked Blind Bei if he was sure. It's a good idea, blind man, Blind Bei said. He couldn't take the risk of his safety. However, he was responsible for protecting him, of course. If he managed to reach the ninth level faster, it would greatly lighten the blind man's burden. Blind Bei informed him that he couldn't always bring Mo Wang. Zheng Fan replied that Mo Wang didn't come out for the blind man, Blind Bei said he was sure. But if he was in danger, Mo Wang would definitely appear. Zhang Fan asked Blind Bei if he thought Mo Wang still loved him, Lion Man. Blind Bei answered no. He thought that he was just dreaming about taking a look. Zhang Fan, before his death, didn't know what to say to the Bei, and kept telling the man that he needed to prepare for the journey, so he asked him to forgive him. Zheng Fan said, go, blind man, go. Then someone behind him said that there were also many people. Blind Bei turned around, and it was Feng Xinyang who said there were five people. Twenty minutes each, thirty letters each. He inquired of me how long it would take him to read everything he did, as everyone deserved it. The blind man, Blind Bi, replied that he hoped Feng Xinyang would write back to him, as they wouldn't do it there. He could write something for them. Feng Xinyang firmly instructed him to get lost. He wondered why the men were able to go somewhere to have fun while he was forced to stay here alone. And after that, Blind Bei remained silent, wanting him to write something nice for those he held the blind man for. Blind Bei replied to Feng Xinyang that indeed holding him with a strong battery was enough to replace six regular batteries. At night, Feng Xinyang's hand touched Jen again. She told Feng Xinyang that okay, enough massage for today. She wanted to rest. Feng Xinyang said no, sir. She wanted to sleep in the same bed with him. The others were not here now. So, she couldn't leave him. Feng Xinyang continued to say that if Blind Bei was here, she wouldn't have to worry about his safety. But because he wasn't there and she didn't have his technique, Zheng Fan asked Feng Xinyang if it wasn't a burden for her. She closed her eyes in frustration and asked the gentleman if he really wanted to sleep on the floor.
She opened her eyes, burning with purple fire, and asked Zheng Fan. If he really hated her, Zheng Fan answered in confusion that he didn't. It meant he had to stop being so sensitive. He said okay, they could sleep together. He didn't mind Feng Xinyang saying with a smile that in this case, she would go to her room and change clothes. Then, does he have any preferences? He will bring some clothes so that Zheng Fan has many options. He was confused to answer properly after he left Zhen Fan thinking that in his opinion, he was some kind of stone without the need for daily massages also made him too excited. He has trained Kai and his blood lately, so Feng Xinyang suddenly took his head and said what happened. Zhang Fan fainted. Feng Xinyang continued to tell that he returned. Then he thought about little Mo Wang. Maybe when he returned, he would call his mother, so he shouted about what happened to him clothes. Why did he turn into pieces of paper? Purple paper shining began to fly around him. Immediately there was an explosion. Feng Xinyang sinned, coughing, standing in the middle of the smoke. Then a large claw extended towards her. He grabbed Feng Xinyang. He couldn't even move, surprised at the stone inside, locked in the middle of the purple smoke. Zheng Fan regained consciousness. Zheng Fan thought of Mo Fan and asked him what he would do next. Later on, Zheng Fan lay on the bed with his eyes closed. The sunlight shone on his face. Zheng Fan opened his eyes and got out of bed, wiping his face with his hand. He paid attention to Feng Xinyang lying on the floor. He thought about the fact that they had agreed not to sleep in the same bed. Feng Xinyang opened her eyes, got up, and sleepily stretched her body, asking Zhang Fan if he was awake and would wait until she finished bathing. Then Zhang Fan answered to himself that what happened was expected. He was just another man. He decided to tease her later. Zhang Fan washed his face and Feng Xinyang helped him get dressed. She told him that breakfast was ready and asked him to do it himself, as the servants also needed to clean up. Zhang Fan spoke nicely here. Zhang Fan turned his attention to the Mo Wang stone. He wondered if he had left it in bed. He took the stone in his hand, thinking that maybe it had disappeared. Then people saw how he left Feng Xinyang upset after his departure, thinking that something would work out with his master. However, who would have thought that Mo Wang would stand in his way? He asked Mo Wang a question about whether he loved his father so much or hated him instead. He took off his nightgown and told Mo Wang that if he loved Zhang Fan so much, it meant he didn't want a stepmother. If Mo Wang hated Zhang Fan, it meant he wouldn't let him touch a woman, making it difficult to be his father. It is difficult to be ambitious at an old age, but he is a lucky person. How difficult it is to become someone's stepmother. Someone said they heard it last night, and someone destroyed and seized the fortress. Hopefully the family is out of town. They dare to do such a thing right under the nose of the army. They are not afraid. They will only be cleaned up. And after the May family's power was defeated, the flag of the Zhang Gulf army was hung on the wall. Zhang Fan was thinking about the family fortress. If his memory serves him right, they had a relatively weak army. Furthermore, their fortress was halfway to the city of Kudo and Tumen. But because they had the support of both cities, most of the troops did not dare to interfere with them. Zhen Fan was sitting in a chair, drinking tea, and three men stood beside him, talking to each other. One of them said it to the other. However, he has experienced a lot of oppression in recent years and it is something that is not enough of a problem for him. Then the other person said that if his memory doesn't change, the leader of the army is a lieutenant with a family name performed by the Bupati himself, and he ordered him to do this, whoever leads the team. Then one of the men asked Zheng Fan and immediately laughed, saying that they also have a captain with the family name Zheng Fan. Another answer was yes, is it true that their captain went out at night and destroyed their family? However, the man responded to them that he held the rank of army lieutenant. He led the soldiers. Seemingly, they were also Captain Lieutenant Zheng Fan vomited water. After all these words, the men immediately turned and looked at him. Zhang Fan sat and thought that Captain Zheng Fan was his surname. He thought that he should not be told, but it was their work. A man approached him and asked Lieutenant Zhen about his official title. However, Zheng Fan said that it belonged to the army Zhen Bei, located in the city of Kudo. Zheng Fan continued by saying that he was a captain merchant guarding the man, asked him about Zheng Fan's intentions. 
Army Zhang Fan thought to himself that he wanted to know what his intentions were. He didn't know what they were doing since they left the inn. Zheng Fan stood up and went to the door. Zheng Fan asked questions about why he explained his plan to someone. Marquis Jembe Su Wenju slammed his hand on the table. Then he shouted. Zheng Fan confidently stood on the carpet in front of him. Suenju shouted a question about what crime his family had committed. Zheng Fan committed that most of their actions could be considered crimes. So when Zhu shouted that this was fair speculation, this was the city of Kudo, and this was their judgment. However, he shouted at Zheng Fan that he truly believed that he would not punish him for his lack of manners. Zhang Fan responded that he had no comments, and he thought to himself. And now all the problems had befallen him. His shoulders except he didn't know what was happening. What could he do except continue this performance? However, after that, he drew his sword while saying extraordinary. Zhang Fan stood still and didn't move, realizing that he was trembling. But it turned out it wasn't just a feeling of coldness, but a thirst for the murder. The energy of the blue glow began to shine around his pocket. Zhang Fan realized that Mo Wang had awakened. Mo Wang is an adopted child. Each of his nine lives, living with his parents who did not acknowledge him immediately, has enough hidden anger within him to purify this world with blood. If blind Bei and Sinian can be called his adopted children, the children of the jobs he took over. When his partner is gone, Mo Wang can be considered his own child because he created him from beginning to end. And now everything has reached its target, that his own son threatens his position. Mo Wang laughs behind Zheng Fan's back. Then after that, he throws his sword aside, grabs Zheng Fan's shoulder, and asks him why. He's at home. Then Mo Wang disappears behind him. Zheng Fan replies that the young woman is fine according to himself, who seems to possess her. Mo Wang becomes calm. After the man lowers his tone, he says that he recently happened to pass by the gate. Unfortunately, he wipes away his tears, saying that the young woman also has a difficult time that must be experienced by his majesty capital. So the Marquis family can only rely on the help of the young miss. Zhang Fan, who sees the man, thinks that he seems to be Zheng Fan's spy soldier. He never thought that he would become a participant in the spy film. But he continues to say that he remembers that Zheng Fan's family moved to Kudo City about six months ago. He then asked the Jin Fan that he came here on behalf of the young woman Zhang Fan wondered if he could extract some information from her. He said loudly that the woman saved his life. His father and grandfather were servants of the Li Zheng Fan family, he continued, saying that his father was Zhang Chenggong and his grandfather was Zhen Jilon. They happened to be foreigners responding to Zhuanzhu with a smile that he heard from them. Moreover, it seems that they had once drunk with his father. He went on to say that it turned out to be an integration into the ranks of the city's underground gang. Kudo is also a command from Mrs. Zheng Fan. The answer writes the first step. He didn't have time to finish as Wenju had set. He put his palm to his mouth and told him to be quiet. He asked how he could say such things to outsiders like her. However, after that, he asked her not to trust too much next time. And when he released his hand from Fan Jing Fan, he replied, Your Majesty, you are right. Zhu Enju said that he would take care of the May family fortress. If she has any problems in the future, she can go there immediately. If one day the woman wants to have the entire cottage for herself, Zheng Fan should say so. Zheng Fan mentally thanked the spy writers. Because without them, he wouldn't know what to do with the zoo and Zhu clenched his fist hand, saying that he would personally open the gate to the woman and offer this to her city, Fan thought it was a barrier that had been successfully crossed. A few days later, the moon shone brightly in the sky. Zheng Fan was lying in the hot spring, while Feng Xinyang sat beside him on the ground. Zheng Fan said that they had indeed sent him a letter, but it was only a letter from Blind Bi, which was useful to Mo Wang. A floating stone was in the water in front of them. Zheng Fan talked about why he felt that the family fortress was his. He might be the first person to attack them, and it would be better if they attacked themselves, and he had to wear the Genbei soldier's skin to face the Kudo City report. It was precisely because he was the highest official in Hudo City and the part-time spy marquee of his troops. He would do it, but he had been dead for a long time. 
Feng Xinyang asked her master if he was bored with his daily training. She massaged Zhang Fang's body and asked for his opinion. When he got his rank, Zheng Fan replied that Ding Hao told him to do it, sometimes controlling the blood in Kai. There was only one missing case. He didn't know. Maybe when he opened his eyes tomorrow, he already had this rank. Feng Xinyang told her master that she knew there was a gap in his heart. Zheng Fan answered that it wasn't like that and laughed. Feng Xinyang said that in her opinion, this gap was right in front of Zheng Fan's eyes. He suddenly stood up and said that he was tired and needed rest. Feng Xinyang informed her master that she remembered that Mo Wang was a spirit that needed spiritual energy from heaven, and for him, she could easily redeem it. However, if he placed it somewhere in the yard to spend the night, so that he could absorb the moon. But when Zhang Fan asked him if it would work, Master Feng Xinyang said that at least he should listen to what others say to him. A thief entered here, who would think of stealing the damaged stone Jing Fan's words. Then let's try it, and he placed the stone. Feng Xinyang hugged Zheng Fan and they left, and the green magic began to shine. The stone that Zheng Fan asked about the fact that the wind had increased it. Feng Xinyang answered that it might be the north wind, but it doesn't matter. This is the norm for this area, at the same time the green magic from the Mo Wang amulet is getting stronger. Then, after that, Fang Singin told the master that he had to take off his clothes first. Even though Wang the evil appeared from the amulet, he was angry at home when Feng Xinyang needed Zhang Fan's shoulder, who liked to stand in Feng Xinyang's bathrobe, was thinking about Mo Wang. He knew why Mo Wang was afraid to appear in front of him. However, because he kept avoiding it, Feng Xinyang didn't believe that Mo Wang dared to break in here. But besides that, here, Feng Xinyang interrupted her thoughts and hugged Zheng Fan while thinking about how she could let go of what she wanted. Her human creator and Mo Wang did not disturb her in any way, except Mo Wang still wanted to protect his father from a relationship with another woman. Zheng Fan quickly embraced Feng Xinyang, feeling embarrassed, and called her name for the last time as he leaned towards her ear and whispered to the master. He told her that he had some bruises on his chest and he would help her get rid of them. Confused, Feng Xinyang said that she didn't want him to do this in response. She asked Zheng Fan if she didn't trust him. He replied that she was wrong, and Feng Xinyang informed her master that her blood was still overloaded, and it needed to be dealt with as soon as possible. Then after that, Zhang Fan replied, well then he had to do it. Feng Xinyang tried to ask for permission from her servants to handle it with her own hands. Zhang Fan replied, okay. Zheng Fan woke up in the morning and stretched sleepily in bed. Then his eyes widened in surprise as he thought that he really received a grave warning. The city is the destination for commercial exchanges between regions. The Western Blind B.I. region plays the piano and says it's just the beginning. They only wanted to discuss soap and perfume. He sat there with his instrument and played while being a trader in the Western region, sipping tea in his chair. Susan placed the knife on Blind Bay's throat. Wendy continued to say it when he asked them to change their methods and as they say. Then suddenly five men burst into the room with weapons in their hands, and Blind Bay hurriedly said that people could be very cheap. He continued to play the piano and said that the perfume and soap were ready and honestly, they could even give them the secret recipe. Then with weapons drawn, they shouted at the surprised blind man. Blind B.I. said that before others knew the ingredients. They could easily make a large amount of money. Blind B.I. continued with a smile, saying it as a reward for this. But they only asked for a little silver, 600 top-class horses, and 300 sets of armor and weapons that they needed to imitate. Zheng Fan's army equipment, and he was sure they would be able to get something similar. He asked when they would drink tea what he would say. He answered as much as he could while sweating, and said that he just wanted to know why, until today, they hid the location after they brought lion perfume and soap. Blind B.I. replied that they were waiting for the money to appear in the afternoon. Zhang Fan sat down and focused on Kai Ding Ju's performance on the energy around him and said in surprise, because it was Zhang Fan who asked, that this is a kind of special type thing that you answered that it is actually a quite common variation.
Xiang Pan asked why he was so surprised. Then he asked Zheng Fan if he was joking. Since Zheng Fan has reached his rank, it means that his career as a teacher has reached its peak. But finally, he continued by saying that their relationship can no longer be characterized as teacher and student. But he thought to himself that Zheng Fan really didn't understand why he was so surprised. Zhang Fan closed his eyes and said that he would have it completely. Forget it if he didn't remind him about it. He shouted calling Simeon and said that this person is no longer useful. He can use it as plant fertilizer. Ding Zhu was surprised to think about it. But your mother agrees to be a teacher. For a while he became one of the life fans. Xiang put his hand on his shoulder and jokingly said. Jokingly, Dang Feng Xin Yang Zhu smiles told Guru Ding that their master is the most caring and kind person. He continued by saying that he had two choices, the first one to be used as fertilizer and the second one to come under their wing. Then the guru became Zheng Fan and corrected him by saying that he might have meant to be a servant, things that Sing telling Zheng Fan that he thought it sounded more arrogant. He said, okay, let it be as he wishes. Zheng Fan looked at him with a smile and thought that the beautiful woman was beautiful. But at the same time, dangerous Feng Xin Yang hugged Zheng Fan's hand and asked Kwasai Ding about what he chose, bowing his head and answering it. And even though he became a servant, he would never become anyone. What's the point of him, except that they would just waste food on him? Feng Xin Yang told Ding Zhu that he shouldn't worry about it. The Zhang family's dogs are different from other family dogs. For example, if someone's dog breaks its leg, it is likely to happen. It is allowed to make sinful soup using magic and purple thread appears around it. She continued by saying that the Jen family will always help their dog get its claw back. Surprised, Ding Zhu asked her if she could really heal it. Feng Xin Yang answered that she wouldn't do it. She was able to do it before, but now she does it. Then, after that, she fell to her knees, causing her wheelchair to fall to the floor. She bowed to Zhang Fan and Feng Xin Yang, saying it's okay. She agreed. She started repeating the words of Master Jiang's fan to Ding Ru that after the treatment, she could safely start working. Zhang Fan told Xinyan that she could start. She lowered her head and said that it would be fulfilled later. Zhang Fan was sitting and drinking tea when Feng Xin Yang approached him. She approached him and told the man that she wanted to inform him that Ding's recovery would take a few days. She also thought that she would be able to return to the ninth level of martial arts. Zheng Fan mentioned that he remembered Feng Xin Yang saying that she was unable to heal him. Feng Xin Yang, confused, replied that she had been practicing a lot lately, and it seemed like she was successfully regaining her basic skills. Feng Xin Yang thought to herself that the blind person, blind Bei, was not here now, and she was unsure whether she should inform the master about her recovery. She hurried to Zheng Fan and told him that she wanted him to continue his training tonight so that his hands would fully recover. She emphasized that he needed to work hard for the benefit of his master. She asked him not to refuse her request, to which Zheng Fan promptly agreed. Later, Zheng Fan was called by a servant who informed him that someone from Yaman had arrived in the lobby and was asking for him. Zheng Fan replied that it was fine, he would be there. The man sat down and told Zheng Fan that he had a beautiful house and was sure that Zheng Fan had spent a lot of money on it. Feng Xin Yang interjected, saying that the house was haunted, so it was quite cheap. The man mentioned that the next day they would send the Marquis a bunch of birthday gifts that his master desired, and Zheng Fan accompanied the process.